A few months ago, my daughter sent me a photo of her new plant. And I was like, I have never seen this plant before. And being a curious gardener, I started Googling and I found out it was an alocasia. Now, the thing about the alocasia, what I'm fascinated is the leaves. Look at this. This looks like an arrowhead. Beautiful. And those lovely white veins going down actually looks like a painting. So I decided, let me buy the plant. And then also curiosity tells me I need to learn how to propagate. So this is what I'm going to share with you today. Now, this is also a different allocation. Now, if you notice, this has an arrowhead sort of shape, but look at that. It looks like a heart. And the beautiful thing about this one, it's called an elephant here. It's got all these lovely crinkles. And this is the beauty about alocasia is because all these veins are so prominent. So basically today I'm going to talk to you about propagating this beautiful plant so you too can have many in your house. And so my name is Alice and I'm the Red Soil Gardener. There's over 80 species of this beautiful plant. It's basically a forest plant. So once you understand that, then you really know about the plant because basically it doesn't like direct sun. The leaves are quite flimsy. And once it does get direct sun, overhead sun, you could burn the leaves. So they like sort of bright, but uh, basically diffused light. And um, the other thing about it is, is the soil type is that it likes a well-drained soil. So what I've done here is I've actually put it in this lovely organic mix here, very light, aerated. So at least you get a circulation of air going Going around because otherwise you will get root rot. So this is the basic thing about um, alocasias. And the other thing about them is that they do like humidity because they are forest plants. And the only way one can solve that, because like, for example, here in Africa, we don't get that much humidity, even in this, uh, w during the warm weather. But basically you can group your plants together so that any sort of transpiration you get from the plant, it keeps that sort of humid sort of environment around it. Or you could actually have pebbles on a, on a tray and let that also, as the evaporation, it keeps the humidity. But as an indoor plant, I've actually had no problem with humidity. So the thing about this particular plant is that although it is a forest plant, is it doesn't like to get waterlogged. Always keep the soil moist, but don't overwater, otherwise the leaves will go yellow. Now, the thing is, is that do your finger test, because once you go about an inch or an inch and a half and you feel there is a bit of water there, I would just leave it for a while. However, if you feel that it is sort of dry, then I would water, but just water it moderately. If you overwater, again, as I said, the leaves will go dry and you may even get root rot. Now, the other thing what I'd like to tell you is that if I pull this plant closer is if you notice is that basically you get two stems. Now, what happens is this is the oldest stem and then the baby stem comes from this stem, if you see. So this is the baby one and it develops inside this one and then shoots out. So don't be worried if your alocasia has only two stems. Once it starts maturing and because it has a rhizome, what happens is you will get shooting of other babies. So initially, if you do buy your plant and you only have two stems, don't worry about it because the babies are underground. When I initially got my alocasia, it started growing. So what I did is I decided to dismantle it and then have a look at the rooting. So this is my initial plant so when I look here look it's got such beautiful rooting when I looked here then I could understand what was actually happening is I could see where the nodes are so I'm just going to open it up a bit and we can share this here you get another node and that's where a rooting is going to take place and there's another one 
that's where the rooting is going to take place. So once you understand this, then you know exactly where your nodes are, because we always work with nodes, that's where the rooting takes place. So with this alocasia, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replant it. So at least we know what is happening. Now the other thing what I did is I bought another alocasia and in order to understand it, I wanted to understand the propagation and this is what I did is I got the trunk and then I started to propagate it. So I basically cut it, plonked it into soil and again now you see that if you do have a plant like this with your two leaves, on the side where the rooting and the, the baby comes from, you will get multiplication in that. So I wouldn't panic so much. So now I understand that as you have an alocasia, is you may get just a plant like that, but as it develops, you will get babies sprouting out. So now we're going to do a propagation. I'll show you what I did with these ones to get these babies coming out. We're going to do that, but I'm going to wear my gloves because my nails are getting ruined. Um, so what we're going to do now is these, these little babies here, I actually grew them in a long uh, container and that's why they've gone a bit this way, they're growing outwards this way, but that's not a problem because what we'll do is in a pot, I've got my pot here and I'm going to do several propagations in here, but I'm just going to cut it. I'm going to cut the rhizome and then put the plant here and then after it takes up, I will actually repot it in individual uh, pots. So let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this here for a while. I have my sterilized knife and what I'm going to do is simply cut the rhizome here like that. This one we're going to pot it into an individual one but as oh, there's so many babies and I'm going to do the same thing here is I'm going to cut it here. So I have two propagations going to work here. This is another one and I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to cut it there and then with this last one where we've seen our babies coming up I'm going to cut it here. Okay so I have my four beautiful plants going to happen. I'm going to put these in this pot. Now this pot, what I've done, it's, it's actually a very aerated mixture. I've got some cocoa stuff happening there. I've got um, a bit of perlite happening and it's basically a well aerated soil. It's not, I don't have any clay in it. So I think my babies will be happy. So I'm going to just stick these ones in here. Um, I think what I'm going to do, I think these two would do quite well here. So I'm going to just leave it here and I think I'll just put another two in a different because I don't want it too overcrowded. So I'm going to take this baby and again put it in here and cover it. Lovely. So excited. And then um, this other baby can go in here. Just put its root in there. And the thing about these plants is that their rooting system actually is quite strong as we saw on this other plant is if you look at that rooting system look at that i mean they're quite strong for a small plant so i'm actually very hopeful that things will work out so these are my beautiful alocasias which we've propagated from soil and I am so sure within a month we'll see something dramatic happening and we will go back to this, um, this plant because there's a lot more to say about it. The next thing I would like to show you is a water propagation because you could still do this and so what you would do is actually take 
your babies. Um, I'll use this one because look, I'm getting a baby here and the rooting is happening, is I'm gonna clean it up. Maybe up to this level. So I have the rooting in the water and I do have my baby there. So what I'm going to do is put it in water and um, I just saw this and I thought it's really impressive how that you can do it in water. So you basically stick your toothpick here, stick your toothpick here, and then, um, and then I'm just gonna stick it in here like that. And then I wait for the rooting to happen. And then what we'll do with these other rhizons, I'm just gonna stick them back in the soil. So what we have here is just a straightforward soil propagation. We have a water propagation here, and then we're going to do a propagation by division of these ones. So what I'm going to do is actually look for the nice bits. Just keep cutting, because I see this bit doesn't look very good. But yeah, I can take it up to here going to remove oh I'll just cut that bit because this bit is a bit oh doesn't look so healthy so I'm gonna cut it here cut it here any parts that are brown and old I'm going to remove so what I'm going to do now with these babies uh, the ones I've chopped up the risins is I'm gonna put it put it in here and what I've done is that this has got the cocoa peat and all that lovely stuff and a bit of perlite. And this is where I'm going to propagate our little risins. I'm just going to mix it up a bit. And, just, and you see the texture again is this lovely organic, full of um, organic stuff and very light and airy. So, and this is what our babies like. So we're going to start here. I'm going to put all these babies in here and then we can always follow it up because I haven't finished with this plant and I will want to see about that one and we can start propagating it because it's such a beautiful plant too. And so we will have a part two episode. So I'm going to just have these babies here and then we'll follow up and see how it's doing. So here we go. These are our babies. There's just one little issue with uh, these beautiful plants is sometimes you do get spider mites and the reason why that happens is because of these veins, you see is uh, like if you look at this particular one is that because it's got all these sort of crevices you know it looks all crinkly and over here at the back is you must check for spider mites because they love to be there and web themselves in so what i'm going to do is just to make sure because everyone talks about these spider mites so it's just a bit of water with a bit of um, washing up liquid, to, but not even washing up liquid, because I've used the, the soapy water that I use for my vegetables for cleaning. And then I'm just going to make sure that I wipe the leaves, because I've had a problem with spider mites before, and I really don't want to have another issue. So just to make sure that these babies really survive so I would wash the top and then I would wash underneath just to keep these pests at bay. And usually you would know if you've got spider mites because sometimes that you see their actual web <laughs> on the back of the plant. But so far it looks actually quite clean. And once you've done that, is that at least in a way, is that if you do have spider mites, do separate your plants 
so you don't infect them. But if you do clean them up regularly, you won't have an issue with spider mites. So just give the baby a wash. So that's what I normally do to protect my little babies. And I will give these ones also a wash. So thank you so much, fellow gardeners. So here we are with so much propagation and I will do this one. And um, look how many plants we've ended up with. And do follow this. And if you do have any tips, do share them because I've just started learning about this plant and I'd really like to know more so you can share. Don't forget to like, it means a lot to us and don't forget to share with your friends and don't forget to press that notification button so anytime we upload on Tuesdays you'll always be notified. Thank you so much and have a happy day.